Hey guys, this is Ross with Hamel Bros Studios. And two nights ago on Halloween, my son wanted to be the new version of Pennywise from the 2010 decade It movies. And at the end of the night, I decided it would be fun to shoot video of him doing his Pennywise dance. And uh, if you haven't seen the movie, the effect is basically Pennywise's face is still reasonably still in the frame while the whole scene moves around him. So this is what I got on my phone. As you can see, you know, it worked fairly well. But what I ran into was a lot of trouble with shot with frames like this. And as you can see, my phone just completely trashed the footage. It was so compressed. And you can't clearly see his eyes here, at least not enough for tracking data. So um, it was a very popular GIF, and I was asked to make a tutorial on this. So I decided to go ahead and reshoot this. And so last night, November 1st, I got out our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and shot this in 4K DCI Blackmagic RAW. I can't remember what the ISO was, but I had to crank it up fairly high because the uh, it was so dark outside. But anyway, just want to uh, also want to thank my lovely wife for shining a little extra light here for us. And this is the footage that we're starting off with. I'll just cut this down to about 10 seconds, hitting the N key and then trim comp to work area. So the first thing I did was I decided I wanted to add, I figured I could do this in After Effects, use the stabilize motion, set it to rotation, and let's just make this a decent sized search area. I'm gonna line that up kind of on his eyeball there. And I'm actually going with the center where the paint comes down through because that was one thing that I could count on being fairly consistent even if his eyes were motion blurred out. So let's just move this forward and see what we get. There we go. But if you want to make that costume, you should have Velcro. You should have Velcro. Okay, good, good advice. Thank you. So we're 34 frames in, so a little, about a you know second and a half here, and our tracking data is already gone wonky. So if we page up, page up, we lose it right about the 33rd, and what I had to do the first night, as you can see, the, the paint is fairly consistent and I can I can distinguish where his eye hole is in the mask um, not eye holes the cereal but the literal eye holes in the mask um, the paint at least runs through there so I can see and I spent about an hour manually tracking this the other night and nobody wants to do that unless you're a glutton for punishment which some people are so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, misuse a plugin. Um, I, I tried this in Mocha as well and getting the results took a really long time and a lot of expressions. Um, this is going to be much simpler. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my footage here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete out my motion trackers because I don't need them. I'm not going to use them. And using control space, or I believe it's command space on Mac. I'm going to open up video copilots effects console plugin. If you don't have it, get it. It's free and it is a lifesaver, but I'm going to instantiate the new red giant spot clone tracker. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off so we can, so it's not cloning per se. And we're going to use this in a way it wasn't really intended for as far as I'm aware. I'm going to set my spot, and then I'm going to set my clone. I'm going to go down here and set explicitly for my clone. I'm going to move it right here over his eyeball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and track this forward. 
oops, forgot one thing. I'm gonna go back here and set this to wireframes only for faster tracking. I'm gonna track forward. Okay, so we're done. Like the it's tracked, and that was uh, that took no time at all. Definitely didn't take an hour. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to. Let me just go ahead and call this spot. If I can type spot clone layer. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hit U to open up my tracks. And so since I already instantiated the motion tracker, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit U on this layer. So spot center was the left eye and it's gonna be tr track point one. I'm gonna copy, command C or control C. I'm gonna to go to feature center, I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna to go to attach point, I'm gonna paste. And then I'm gonna go spot the clone from center, command or control C, and then over here I'm going to command or control V to paste these in. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on this layer to open it up and you can see all of our track data is now there. We cheated, but who cares, that's what visual effects is, is cheating. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. X and Y, yes. It's going to take us back into our composition and look at this. Oops, let me turn off this layer because we don't need it anymore. Zoom out a little bit so we can see. And even with the motion blur, we're still getting a really, really good track. So the next step in the process is, as you, as you can see, we've got you know, all the gray area kind of messing with us there. So I'm just going to go here and create a new composition. I'm going to set this to 10 seconds. I'm just going to call this Pennywise. Pennywise. Right. Pennywise. Dance. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this comp in here. And now since it is a 1920 by 1080 and we're stabilized off his face, I'm gonna go ahead and move my anchor point, select the Y key or the pan behind tool, grab my anchor point and kind of center it up between his eyes. I'm gonna start from the first frame and I'm gonna scale this down a little bit. Turn on my keyframes. We're gonna scale it up. And obviously you would want his face to be more centered, but for the sake of our example, I think this will do just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and hit F9, select both keyframes and hit F9. And let's just RAM preview this, and that's gonna give us kind of our zoom in. It'd probably be a good idea to shoot this at a higher shutter speed, but I was in a hurry, so I didn't. But even with the motion blur, it totally works. And it's creepy. And now... There you have it. So we have a little bit of a zoom at the end and he starts dancing and everything's moving behind him just like it did in the movie. And we did this in less than 10 or 15 minutes with the tracking. So I would say that's pretty remarkable. Let's just, we can blow this up. Oops, I don't want to open that. Go away. Fit up to 100. Um, and there you go. You can use your seven-year-old to scare grown adults. So literally uh, using, uh, using tracking, using both uh, After Effects' motion trackers, just get it instantiated so you have your keyframes. 
And then use Spot Clone Tracker to track your two points and use that for your stabilization. Um, definitely a way to misuse a misuse a plugin in a way that's going to really help. And actually, we I use this a very similar technique on our upcoming short, a good dame for a sandwich, which is going to come out with the aperture light this location contest, but. Yeah, this was a fairly quick and dirty way to accomplish this effect, and I think it works. So, uh, best of luck. If you don't have the Spot Clone Tracker, get it from Red Giant. It's part of the VFX suite. I would buy the whole VFX suite if I were you. Every tool in there is massively useful, even if you're not going to use all of them. Uh, Super Comp, Kingpin Tracker, and Spot Clone Tracker are so are thus far my absolute favorites and my most used. And again, uh, get the Video Copilot effects console. It will save your time and save your life. And it's got a bunch of really great features. And I will put links to both of these down in the description. So again, my name is Ross Hamill with Hamill Bros Studios, and I appreciate you hanging out, and best of luck with your spot going tracking. <laughs>